Can we create a machine learning model without writing a single line of code? Well, this video is going to answer that question. We're going to generate some artificial tabular data where we explicitly define the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. We're then going to upload this data to Google Cloud Storage and use AutoML to generate a machine learning model based on this data. We'll then take some new novel records and run some predictions to see how accurate that model is. Let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to generate some data to be used for training our model. Um, this is going to be tabular data, meaning that it's it's data that could um, be represented in a table. Uh, it might be a CSV file or something similar to that. And we're going to be defining the relationship between the inputs and the targeted output field. So I created some dummy columns here. And the gist of this is we have four input fields, and they're going to be of different data types. We have age, industry, annual revenue, and employees. And then the output is a class, but it's a binary class, true or false, uh, of whether that company will be successful based on the values in these input fields here. And it's very important that the relationship between these inputs and the outputs are explicitly defined, and that that is the case for in this example, at least all the entries. In a real world example, um, you'd have anomalies and things like that, and that's okay. But we really want this relationship to get through to the, to the AutoML processor and that it's able to surface that relationship. And so what we're gonna do is, instead of filling out dummy data here, we're gonna write a script to do that for us. So if we go over to Tools and Script Editor, I've already created that script, and I'll just run through real quick what that's doing. Okay, so this script is going to iterate through as many times as we want. I'll do 15 for now, just so we verify everything looks good. And then when we're actually generating our final data, I'll up this to 1500. So as I mentioned, there are four input fields, age, industry, annual revenue, and employees. So for age, it's going to be a random number, 1 through 20. For industry, it's going to be one of these classes here selected randomly. For revenue, it's also going to be a random number ranging between 1,500 and 2.2 million. For employees, it's going to be a random number from 0 to 400. And so that all gets defined with the script. Now, the targeted output field, which is what the model is going to predict, needs to abide by a formula. And so I've defined that formula right here. And so what this is saying is, if column two, and column two is the annual revenue, if annual revenue exceeds one million, and column one, it's a zero indexed array, so this is column one, is either software or banking, then the value for success prediction is true. So if these conditions are true, then we mark that company as going to succeed. And if they're false, we mark it as it's going to fail. And so this relationship here is a nonlinear relationship. And Although it's fairly straightforward for us to understand this relationship, in real world machine learning examples, this would not be something that we could just manually observe. There's too many inputs, the data is too complex, there's too many outputs, there's too many anomalies, there's too much missing data. We would never be able to determine just by looking at the data what that relationship is. And that's the whole use case of machine learning because the machine learning technique will surface that relationship. So we use this relationship to generate this targeted output field here. But when we upload this data to AutoML, it doesn't know this relationship. All it knows is the data that came through. And its goal, what it's going to try to do, is estimate this function, this relationship here, in such a way that we could feed it some novel data, and it will be able to accurately predict whether the company will be successful or not. So this is just a for loop here, and it will just iterate over these conditions and populate 
our artificial data here. And so I'm going to run it. I'm going to run it just for 15 iterations, just so we can observe and see that everything is accurate. So to do that, we just go to save. We do run, run function, and add data. So we need to first give it permissions. Okay, so now if we go back over to our sheet, we can see it ran that function. So it randomly generated for this first entry an age of 12. It said it's the banking industry. If we want to make this a little bit more legible, we can flip it over to currency. So this is 1.2 million and 202 employees. So does this data meet our criteria for the company to be marked as going to succeed? The answer is yes, because the industry is banking or software and the revenue exceeds 1 million. Okay, and then here you can see it got false because neither the revenue was exceeded a million nor was the industry correct. And then we come back down to banking again. Okay, so this is the right industry and it's the right revenue amounts, therefore it's true. Software, right industry, not enough revenue, therefore it's false. Right industry, enough revenue, therefore it's true. So the input fields that matter actually in this function are the industry and the revenue. The age and employees are 100% noise. And that's going to be the case for a lot of real world examples. We'll have input fields that have minor or negligible impacts on the output. So that's okay. And we want to mimic that here. And the model's not going to know that. It's going to have to determine that. And so this all looks good to me. And so what we'll do is we will rerun this, but we're going to run it at 1500. So that's it's a sufficient amount of training data for the model to really suss out what that relationship is between the inputs and the outputs. So we will just run this again. We run add data. And then you can just see that these entries become generated. Okay, so it looks like the function just finished running. So let's take a look at our data. Okay, so it looks like all 1,500 records came through and then those initial 16 that we generated. And let's just pick a random spot in here. Just make sure everything looks copacetic here. So it said this was true. It's the right industry. It's the right amount of revenue. So we just spot check and everything looks good here. So. A couple things to note is uh, because the CSV file is going to get put into a MySQL database uh, when we upload to, to cloud storage, make sure that your column headers are um, alphanumeric and don't contain spaces or special characters. And then also, because AutoML is going to uh, interpret the data type on these various columns, um, this right here is confusing because it's actually a string because it has a dollar sign and it has commas. So we're going to convert it back to an integer. So I'm just going to select the whole column here and I'm going to do formats and we're going to do automatic because we don't want it to run that as a classification. We want it to run it as a number. So it will be number, class, number, number, class. And there's various methods that handles things like classes uh, regar regarding um, uh, one hot encoding and things like that. Um, so anyways, this data looks good. I did 1500. You could probably get away with doing less. Obviously, if you do more, it will probably reflect better accuracy. Um, but anyways, let's let's download this as a CSV file. So I'm going to do file, download as, comma separated CSV file. So now we have a CSV file, and I'll just take a quick look at it in text edit, and it looks good. So it has the columns and then it has the rows. So that all looks good. So now we're going to upload this to a cloud storage bucket. So I am over in my Google Cloud Suite dashboard here. I'm going to find storage. And 
I'm going to create a new bucket just for this project here. I'll call it auto ML example. And one thing to note is it can't be multi-regional. I don't know why. It has to be regional and it has to be your default region, I believe. So we'll use this and I will click create. Okay, so now I have a bucket and it's regional and I'm going to upload my training data. So that is this right here. Okay, that looks good. So now we're going to come over to the auto ML portion and I believe it is under something called tables. So we click tables Okay, so you might have to enable uh, this API, um, but you would just click get started or enable or whatever that prompt is. And then when it's ready, you'll get uh, a view like this. We can go over to new data set. YouTube auto ML example, create data set. So you can import from BigQuery but we're going to import from cloud storage. We can just click browse and if I find my bucket auto ML example and then I click this here, that's my file I just uploaded click select and then I click import. So it might take several minutes to an hour to import the data Okay, so we just want to do a quick audit of this data to make sure everything's correct. So uh, the, the correct columns same, came through, the data types are correct uh, for age is numeric, for industry it's categorical, success prediction categorical, so this all looks good. Now we want to select the targeted output field, which is what we want to predict once the model's trained. So we do success prediction, because that's, that's our targeted output field. And then we are going to click continue here brings us over to analyze. Again, it's some more information. So distinct values for these fields. This is correct because this is binary, so there should only be two. There were only six industries. The employees were random. And then every company had a, basically every company had a different revenue. And then we only allowed companies to be 20 years old at max. So this all looks good. So we're gonna come over to train. And then this is basically all just boilerplate for budget, we want to do one. And then we want all the columns to be factored in to the model. And then we can just check here, target a success prediction, input four features, rows 1515. And then we'll just click train model. And because this data is not that rich, um, it will probably finish under an hour. And so we can just let that train and it will usually email you when it's finished. So now the model is trained. So you won't always get this, but AUC, the closer it is to one, the more accurate the model is. So this is the area under the curve. Um, because our data had no anomalies and there's a relationship in every, every record, um, the model worked so well. It looks like uh, it was able to predict correctly basically 100% of the time, 99.35. And so I expect very good results. Let's do a C full evaluation. So this is all data about the model that we just trained. The accuracy is incredibly high. This is just some summary statistics. Most of the data was pegged as false. That's true. Um, let's see. Feature importance. So this tells you how the model perceived the importance of each feature. So you can see here, industry and revenue are the most important features. And that's exactly right. In fact, employees and age are 100% random noise that doesn't impact the predictions at all. Now what's funny is, it still pegged them as having some importance. Um, and that's um, an error. And that's just because we probably didn't 
provide enough data. As we provided more data, um, this model would be able to determine that they're almost 0% important and that it's completely random noise. So, but that's really cool. So we can immediately see, because this, a lot of the times with your data, that's, that's a big part of the problem is you want to see which factors uh, most influence the output. And we can see right here that these factors do. Um, okay, so now the moment of truth, we can run a prediction uh, against some new data. So we want to select online prediction. And then, so one thing we're going to want to do here is select deploy model. We can't run predictions until we deploy the model. So I'm going to click deploy model. Okay, so it looks like our model was deployed. Gives us the model size. So it provides us with an example of how the data would be fed to the model for a prediction. It's pretty intuitive here. You have a, an array with the four input categories, um, age, industry, revenue, employees. And then presumably it'll respond back with success prediction. So let's just copy this and run a prediction right now. See what this says. So this is automotive industry. Therefore, the prediction result should be false. OK. So that was correct. Now, revenue exceeds a million. So if I just change this to software, the prediction result should be true. OK. Now, I'm a little curious. The formula, the formula is that revenue must exceed a million. So I wonder what happens if we get really close to a million, um, but not quite one million. So let's do 999000. So it's the right industry. And it's just, it's not quite enough revenue. So I bet you, because this is on the fence, so to speak, I bet you these scores are going to be less accurate. Like it's probably still going to peg this as false, but I bet you um, it's, it's a little bit less certain of that. Look at that. Oh, so this actually marked it as true. This marked it as true. OK, so that's interesting. So more data would probably flesh this out a little bit better. Um, but you can see it's a little bit confused here because it's on the fence with the revenue. Um, if we drop 1,000, 10,000, 9,000, um, I bet you it will peg it as false. Yeah, so now it's pegged as false. But it's, a little, it's just not that confident. So that's interesting. Um, and then if we go to you know, automotive, it's immediately going to know that it's false. Yeah. So this is really cool. Um, the model has deduced the relationship between the inputs and the output. It's not perfect um, because it's all probability based. Um, but it's very accurate. You know, if you wanted it to be even more accurate, you could just load in more training data. Instead of 1,500 records, you could do uh, 150,000 or more. And then you could also train it longer. Um, but this is very accurate in its current state. So uh, from there, um, you, know, you can stand this up as an API that you could uh, route requests through from a mobile application. But we were able to create a machine learning model. Uh, I guess. Without, without, we were able to do it without writing any machine learning code. Um, I guess you didn't have to write this code. So yeah, so I think that qualifies. Um, yeah, so we can create machine learning models without a single, single line of code that we need to write. And this is just an example using tabular data. We could also do the same thing with images and other forms of data. And maybe I'll make a tutorial about that. But that is it for this example.